Hello YouTube, and today we are going to dive deep into the design of Uber-like ride-hailing applications. But before proceeding, if you're new to our channel, very warm welcome to you guys. We are software engineers from one of the fan companies, and we are here to share the best tips and tricks with you guys to tr crack your next tech company interview. With that, let's get right in. So in this video, just like our any other system design video, we will start off by gathering requirements. We will evaluate what essential features are in scope or out of scope. Then we will break down those requirements into pieces or components. This will help us paint up a picture in our head that how the entire system will interact with its customer and also what things to pay close attention to for scaling or extensibility purposes of the entire system. Then we will dive into each of the subcomponents by drawing their sequence diagrams. There are many benefits to drawing sequence diagrams and uh, which we will later list out in the video. And in the end, we will list out some of the optimizations that we can employ in our system for better extensibility or availability. And also explore some mechanism on how to do the capacity planning for such a huge and global system. But before we move any further, small disclaimer for you guys, this is our take on Uber system. We did a thorough research for it, but this could be a little or vastly different from what Uber might have in place at the moment. Since their system is constantly evolving with each day due to scaling challenges and other issues, so please supplement this material with your own research for an outstanding interview experience. With that out of the way, let's get started. So let's start things off by looking at the life cycle of a trip. So let's say we have Bob as our user who is requesting an Uber ride. As soon as he opens up the app, uh, his phone shows a list of nearby drivers that are in the area. Uh, he then enters his pickup and drop off location to request a ride. He then presses the button request ride. At which point Uber takes the request and sends it to all the nearby drivers uh, who are available at that point. And then it waits for the driver to accept the request. At which point a ride gets dispatched and the driver CTA is now shown on Bob's Uber app. Uh, now two things can happen at this point. Either driver and Bob can decide to continue the trip or they can cancel. Uh, if they do forward with the ride, Uber tracks the location of the driver in the background which will help to generate the ride receipt after the trip concludes. So at that point, uh, rider gets charged based on the time. So Bob will be charged, let's say $5 or $7 based on how much time, distance, uh, and other factors took to complete that ride. And the driver and rider both will see a receipt uh, and the route on the map that has been ridden during the trip. It is very easy to think that Uber just works if we don't realize that what enormous feat Uber engineers achieved by making that ride booking experience so effortless. Just to give you guys a rough idea, Uber completed 5 billion rides in 2017, but which means that completing millions of rides per day. So at the end of the day, this sounds pretty amazing, but it could be also pretty embarrassing if something or some system is not efficiently designed or extended. So from this, we can list down some of the requirements like uh, the app should be able to show the nearby drivers onto the riders app. A basic but mandatory requirement would be that uh, rider should be able to request a ride from source to destination. Then the riders should be able to see the ETA of the driver when they are about to arrive. Uh, and the one final requirement uh, that we can have would be uh, that we should be able to generate ride receipt uh, at the end of the ride. Uh, and uh, how much money the ride, rider has been charged with. Um, unfortunately, we would not be able to cover the automated matching of the drivers to riders and the price calculation piece uh, after the trip ends. So to keep this video shorter, but if you're really interested in that, let us refer you to our website, www.techtechshila.com for that. And you can find the link for that in the description also. So drawing inspiration from our life of an Uber trip diagram, Let's try to create a very high level component diagram. So first when Bob bootstrapped the Uber app, the Uber app calls the trip dispatcher microservice, which calls the car location index to show all the nearby drivers in the area. These locations are first stored by another microservice, which we call driver location manager. And don't worry about the interaction between these components just yet. We will dive into that in just a bit. Then we have the trip dispatcher, call the ETA calculator microservice, which obviously helps in calculating the ETA of the driver to appear in front of rider. Then once this trip starts, we have trip recorder as the on-trip 
component that tracks the raw driver's GPS signals. Based on the time and the distance of the trip, in the end we have MapMatcher and the price calculator as the post-trip component that takes in the input from the trip recorder to actually generate the receipt and send it to both rider and driver. So, now as we have a complete picture of Uber's architecture, at least from the ride booking point of view, let's peel one more layer down to understand the inner workings of uh, the components. So before when Bob even opened his app, Uber was busy gathering raw driver's location in a very sophisticated data store. Let's call this car location index. This index is a distributed cache where the car locations are stored in memory. So we have this driver location manager service that is tracking all the driver's location data points and which are emitted like every four or five seconds in this car location index. Now, once Bob has bootstrapped his Uber app, it calls trip dispatcher service, which then forwards the request to driver location manager service to query all the nearby drivers in the region. So we can see that the performance or, and the resilience of this car location index is of prime importance. For doing that, it should be do, it should be able to support two things. First thing is high volume of reads, which are coming from riders Uber app to show drivers for that region. And second thing is high volume of rides to track driver's current location as we will write it every four or five seconds. Now we will explore the details of the car location index in a bit, like what would be its data model, how the write queries and read queries happen. But let's continue with the design of pre-trip component for now. So let's say Bob press the button, request write button here. Then the trip dispatcher notifies the match driver of the request. And once the driver confirms the ride, Uber calculates the ETA by calling the ETA calculator service, which takes in the bunch of parameters into account like a distance, direction of the driver, traffic, weather condition, etc., etc., to give out the calculated ETA back to the rider. And this way, we have the entire life cycle of the Uber trip before the ride even initiates and how it uh, impacts both the rider and the driver user experience uh, via the sequence diagram. So, as we have just mentioned, let's explore how this car location index supports this high volume of reads and writes coming from both riders and drivers in the Uber app. So, as we have mentioned that it is a distributed cache where the car locations are stored in memory. So, how does it do it? It is done by selecting the right kind of sharding strategy to avoid problems like hot partitions. So we can employ a distributed cache to balance the load of reads and uh, writes here that is sharded over city, geolocation, even on products like uh, UberX uh, has a separate shard than Uber Black. And we can store it in memory to make those queries really, really fast. Since we, you don't want Bob to wait five minutes to find the best write for him. But the main thing that we need to take care of is hot partitions. For example, let's say Justin Bieber concert just ended and there is a surge in uh, drivers and Uber riders Uber request at that time. So how we save that particular partition to become hot and hinder user experience. For that, we can further shard for a set of drivers in the region, but this sharding should have to be done at the runtime. This is a little deep topic which deserves a video of its own. So let us know down in the comments that if uh, that is something you guys are really interested in. But here is what the data model looks like for drivers to send their locations. And uh, this is how the location queries happen uh, for showing all the nearby drivers on the Uber app. If you want, you can pause the video here to see them more closely. Uh, fun fact for you guys, uh, Avi Day gave a talk on location serving and storage in Uber Marketplace. So please check that out. That's a really great video and a lot of micro learnings on their actual design of this car location index uh, in that video. So do check that out. So now let's look at the ETA calculator. So we can divide this into two major components. First is how to compute the route from the origin to the destination with the least cost. And second is the estimated time taken to traverse the route. First thing to imagine here, is to convert any map into a geographical representation. So where each intersection is a vertex and each road segment connecting two vertices is an edge. So now we can employ any routing algorithm like Dystra to find the shortest path between source and destination. 
But as we also know that to find the shortest distance, it will take us O n log n runtime complexity. So this means the larger the n, the longer it will take us to find out the shorter distance between two points. So what we can do is to partition the entire graph and pre-compute the best path within those partitions, which significantly brings out the runtime complexity. Once we have the most optimal path to go from point A to point B, we can use the current traffic for information to calculate the ETA, which can be influenced by the time of the day or weather conditions or any concerts or gatherings happening at that particular moment. So this will be influencing the time it will take for the driver to get from point A to point B, just like by adding the weights on these edges based on that traffic condition. Now, Bob is happy as his ride is booked and he got an ETA for driver to arrive. So now let's dive deep into the on-trip component of the system. This is the part where the driver press the start ride button and Uber's backend is tracking the trip's current location for post-trip receipt generation. So here we have the sequence diagram. So we have a message broker that listens to all the events sent by the driver's Uber app. We can use any message broker service here like Apache Kafka, AWS Kinesis, Microsoft Event Hubs, uh, Google PubSub, all are great resilient services. The selection boils down to the use of open source versus closed source or the cost. We are using Kafka streams here for our design because A, it is open source, B, it is cost effective as it doesn't charge on the number of messages in the channel. So once the driver's location is sent to Kafka stream, then it gets forwarded to the trip recorder service, which it takes it and writes it onto a location store, which could be any time series database, but it should support three criteria. Number one, it should support high volumes of rides. Number two, it should, it should be durable. And lastly, but the most important, it should support the time series based queries, such as the location of a driver, in a given time range. To satisfy all of this, we can use Cassandra. Couple of more prominent reasons would be that it is highly scalable and that too linearly, which means that you can keep on adding more machines, nodes, and uh, keep on storing data. So this is essentially important for Uber's scale. They, they do require this uh, sort of uh, linear scalability in their fleet. And on top of that, it is decentralized, which means that it can be divided across different regions for performance reasons. And lastly, it is durable since we don't want to lose trip details because of host failure. And here is the data model for storing these location. So if you want, you can pause the video and quickly glance over it before proceeding. Which brings us to the post trip side of the design story where the trip has finally ended and then our map matcher queries all the uploaded location data points from the location store and then applies a map matching algorithm to generate the map route. You might be asking yourself that why would we need to do that? Like what's the reason for like applying this map matching algorithm? Like it should be more like just connecting the GPS dots emitted by the driver's app and use that route, right? But if anything, GPS data is pretty noisy and something outright wrong. For example, this is what it looks like for our ride data at the end of the trip for a route. We can see that there are a lot of outliers like these. And uh, they are not necessarily lying on the straight line like our road. So part of the problem is these buildings as well, since they contribute in broken signals. And uh, so what we can do about it is uh, we can use an approximation algorithm here to aggregate all these points and infer the actual written path at the end of the trip. So this is where we can use a combination of approximation algorithms like HMM short for hidden Markov model and Witterby algorithm to match the observed GPS signals to the actual road segments on the map. HMM is used a lot in the fields like uh, computational biology for the similar purposes. If you want to learn more about the specific details on how these two algorithms are used, you can visit our website www.techtakshila.com for that purpose. Link is always in the description. So this gives us a high level overview of how Uber handles the overall life cycle of a trip. Now let's talk about some of the optimizations in the design. One of the problem with this design uh, during the post trip and on trip component is, is that both the reads and writes are very high volume 
and they are directed to the same data store, which is the, this Cassandra DB. So what we can do to reduce the load on this database, we can separate the read and write traffic here, by which we mean that instead of storing the raw locations and then reading it from the Cassandra DB itself, what we can do is we can double write the data. So by which we mean that not just writing to the Cassandra DB, but to also write at the Redis cache as well. Since we only need this data for one time while the map matching service generates the written route using the raw location data points. So having a cache for these reads makes more sense as this data is ephemeral in nature. Once the map matched, once, the ma once we have the match route, we can again persist it in the Cassandra DB like this. Another optimization that we can do is with our ETA calculation. Time and time again, we have seen candidates mentioning machine learning to further solve a problem that can't be solved by algorithms. And candidates often get blindsided by a quick follow-up question by the interviewer like, how would you do it? That is what we want to focus on here. There are two important things that we need here. First is selecting the right set of features. And second is right kind of ML model. To choose correct set of features, we can employ feature engineering by doing an exploratory analysis for example, a potential set of features could be region, time of the day, trip type, driver behavior, and so on and so forth. For choosing the right kind of model, we can use random forest neural networks or KNN learning since we get much more accurate results while using them. If you want to learn the specific details about how these features and ML models are selected, please visit our website www.techtechshila.com. There is a lot more information on this there. And also you can refer to this YouTube video by Srita from Uber who explained this process in great detail. So that is uh, all about the optimizations we can employ in our system design. Another important thing we want to mention that it is really important to estimate the infrastructure cost on this whole system working. This could be estimating the fleet size for running trip dispatcher service and also like driver location manager, the car location index, and how many host or nodes or machines we would need to store all that data or transmit all that metrics between these different microservices. This is something we have covered in a lot more detail in other system design interview videos like designing Netflix and designing WhatsApp. So you can grab a basic idea on how to approach this there. But if you really like us to cover that in a separate video, just separately for Uber, uh, then do let us know in uh, down in the comment section. Uh, we will definitely make another video for that. With this, we would like to end the video. Uh, through this video, we learned how ride books, uh, rider books are ride, how driver's location is used to facilitate various pre-trip, on-trip, post-trip processes to facilitate a ride uh, in a ride-hailing application like Uber. Uh, with that being said, Uber does a lot more than just uh, matching a rider with a driver. Uh, but we want to keep this video as short and beginner friendly as possible. So if you're interested in how Uber works out a, out a search price calculation or automated matching uh, for drivers and riders as some of the extended requirements, uh, let us know down in the comment section. We appreciate any feedback or suggestion uh, uh, and also thumbs up if you like the video and subs to get updates for our future video. Also, please head over to our blog for deeper dive on this material and to play around for some of the fitness exercise on the topic. With that, thanks for watching the video. Stay tuned. Designing Instagram is coming up next.